Hey, Dusk here. So I wanted to make another video on Demonologist here because I wanted to talk about the things that really make this one stand out in all the, what we're calling faz likes, right? And that is just how the equipment works. So let's take a look at this. This is an EMF-5, right? That's basically what this is. But it doesn't work like other EMF-5 readers works. It's actually kind of hard to explain, I suppose. So why don't I just give an example here? In, you know, pick your your ghost hunting game. We'll, we'll just say Faz, right? Because that's what we're going to compare to is Phasmophobia. If the ghost had moved something, let's say, in this room or touched something or whatever, we'd kind of like, okay, anything over here, anything over here. You know, this is like what you do, right? You just kind of like poke around and see if you get a reading somewhere. But not this EMF reader. This one actually functions in the kind of Lovecraftian way where it's trying to detect these radiation or radioactive fields. And so if a ghost, let's say, played with like, let's say, the, or light, it lit that candle. I might get an EMF reading back here that might be like EMF one. And then as I got closer, it would go EMF two, EMF three, as I got close to the source. So the field gets stronger. And what this does is it gives this uh, EMF reader here an actual function. function. It's an actual function, right? Like, it's an actual sweeping tool. You can actually use this to sweep the location quickly to try and locate where you have some genuine ghost activity. So... All right, that one didn't get me too bad. So, like, there's no EMF reading here, right? So these are just kind of, like, residuals from the location being haunted. But the ghost itself isn't active here. So we know to keep looking. We're going to check down here in the creepy basement. All right, nothing down here. We won't stay down here too long, so now we're going to talk about the other thing that's really interesting that sets this apart. As you've noticed, lights are popping and exploding, right? That's because uh, it's random, right? It's just a random event that when you turn a light on, there's a chance it will pop and explode. Now, that on its own isn't unique uh, or that interesting, but what is interesting is that if you do a good job of staying in the light, you can actually stay in the house for a pretty long period of time. You're almost completely safe from sanity drain when you're in the light. And so what this does is it almost kind of creates like a random map layout, right? Because here, so I've got, I've got lights here. So I can kind of hang out in these areas, no problem. But when I go to sweep different areas, I have to be a lot quicker. Okay, so we got some light here, so we're safe here. So I can hang out in this section too. And we can kind of like poke this around and try and sweep. And I'm not getting anything. So it tells you that maybe that is kind of back there anyhow. Now you can do some things to prod up some activity. You can say the ghost's name. Oh, Jesus Christ, okay. And I don't know what it is, like, yeah, I've seen, because this is just the demo, so they've only got a couple of different scares. <laughs> but the same ones keep getting me, and that kind of brings us to the third one. The attention to detail in the level design is absolutely insane. These locations, or at least this one, looks so good. It's so immersive and so creepy. It makes the jump scares so much more effective. They don't have to be like super loud. All right, let's go ahead and drop this because I've got a new tool, the thermometer, which should also be a good sweeping tool. Let's give this one a try and see if uh, see if we can locate. Oh, let's go check our sanity. Ah, uh, we can see the temperature kind of adjust here. We are at 96% sanity because I focused on staying in the lit areas. Okay, 91, 96, it does do a little bit of variance, right? Uh, so I, I personally just kind of like that. You know, if you've seen how I play Faz, it was a lot of like, you know, I enjoyed the resource management, the sanity management, things like that. And uh, this game kind of really turns that into a fully engaging mechanic.
Ah, we're in the house. Yeah, it warmed up quite a bit. Oh, it's colder in that room. Okay, it's kind of dark here, so we're going to kind of sprint. I hear. Yeah, we already broke. That. Oh, okay. So we found it. Look at it. Look how cold it is. It's not freezing. So it's in this hallway. Okay. Okay, well, it is freezing now. We're... I said it wasn't freezing as it was well below zero. <laughs> and now we can get in here. And there's... We're starting to get some EMF now. Looks like this is directional as well. Is there... Was it standing there? Was it the actual entity we were detecting for a moment? That's weird. Anyway, we need to get back into the light here, right? So we'll go ahead and throw that down. And now we can go ahead and get some actual stuff. But now we have a, a piece of evidence, right? We have a freezing temperature. Now, if you're curious about the hunt, uh, this is the front door. So it does shut and lock. And you do get a pretty standard ghost hunt phase. The difference is, is there's no warning whatsoever. And you can just turn around and then there it is and you're dead. Uh, which makes playing solo a little bit more nerve wracking. Let's see, I wanna get just some basic setup tools. All right, first thing we're gonna do, hold G. Gotta figure out where we wanna place it, right there, let go of G. And we knew it was kind of back here. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually gonna move that up just a bit. That's good. We'll get out of that area. Oh, let's um the spirit box is pretty standard. Let me show off this. This is something new. That we haven't seen. And this kind of plays up the Lovecraftian uh, steampunk feel that this game is, is putting out, right? This is an ectoplasmic looking glass. So you don't have to bring it up for this to work. It actually still works. Like, if I wanted to check that light switch, I could do that and it would check that light switch. Not for fingerprints. That's the black light. This is looking for just traces of ectoplasm. You'll see them. It looked like a little white dash on the wall where uh, where the ghost is like brushed up against walls or, or other things, right? I've only ever seen them once and they're kind of faint. But this is also only the demo, so it's possible that might make them a little easier to see. Once you see them once, they're pretty easy to discern, though. Because they kind of highlight a little bit. Or a fair bit, I should say. Alright, so I don't see any here. I'm going to drop it right here next to the end. Right, I'm gonna go get the black light. Cause uh fingerprints fade. And for me personally, this has just been a lot of fun to play. I still feel like I'm pretty burned out on this genre. Okay, I don't see any fingerprints there, no fingerprints there. The fingerprints in the demo are pretty easy to see. It just Looks like a silhouette of a hand painted on there. I'm pretty sure it's a placeholder. The ESG? I haven't seen this thing work yet. I don't know what it looks like, but I've been told it's just like a staticky. Oh, okay. Oh, what? That was new. 
Where are you? Where are you? I am going to kill you. All right, so we have freezing breath, and we got a spirit box response. And you got to see what the spirit box looks like. It lights up. All right, that sanity is not doing so good. Here's our camera. As far as I know, the cameras don't have night vision. And again, I think this is because we're a little bit more like Lovecrafty and steampunk, so I'm not sure night vision is something that they'll do. I don't know. Maybe they will. Um, I'm just taking a guess at it. The game comes out on the 27th, and they're going to drop a roadmap with it, so we'll know what they uh, what they have planned for. I'm not sure, but I think there's a painting. All right, let's pop a sanity pill. It's a full animation. Kind of cool. All right, we get our candle in there. Let's open our journal. J for journal. Let's get our evidence. We got uh, freezing. We got a spirit box response. And I think it looks like that easel painting. Ah, it can't be a painting. It's never on to. Is this? It did. It did draw. All right, we'll put the candle there. It's actually a on to for once. Did it already blow out the candle? Now we're going to show off the next phase of the game. So now that we've detected the ghost, now we've locked it in. We cannot change our mind on the ghost anymore. Now the optional objectives, we're going to get money for these, even if we got the ghost wrong. So it's still fine to go ahead and do these. Now, if we have the ghost wrong and we do the exorcism, what happens? I don't know. All right, so now we have to find a silhouette of a sitting human with the looking glass. We need the ghost to blow out a candle, and then we need to take a photo with the ghost. We'll get notified by a little, you'll hear a little piece of music that plays when the ghost does any of these optional objectives. So we'll know when it blows out the candle at this point. Although we'll go double check and make sure it's still lit. It might have blown it out right before I locked in Hantu. All right, looks like it's still going back there. I don't know what was going on, but I tried to take I just try to take a picture. When in doubt, just snap a photo. All right. Well, I I really don't want to put down the cross. So I'm just going to drop the camera. And I turn my flashlight off again. All right, the silhouette is really easy to find. It is not a dark shadow. It is actually bright, a bright white shadow. That was not it. There it is. And, uh, so it makes that, that sound bite. Yeah. Oh my God. Sanity is high enough. I can probably walk through here. Famous last words. I really want the money to buy some customizations. I know it's just the demo, but. I kind of want. I kn Did we get it? We got it. We got it. We got it. We got it. That counted. Oh gosh. Okay. It's like some weird little, it seemed kind of territorial, didn't it? All right. So these are all completed and now exorcism. Uh, let's see the play. Uh, the ghost name is Hope Melton. We got to find Hope's five missing fingers. All right. So we're going to look for these big severed fingers, which is not going to be the easiest task in the world playing solo. Here's one. I'm gonna peek around, make sure we don't have another one just kind of laying around here. 
just one, it, so that means the rest of the fingers are going to be in the back area. That, that sucks. That's one, that's one. All right, so. Going to run down here. Burn that one. Yoink. This is a giant finger. I'm not feeling real confident about this. Is that one over there? There, there is. There is this one over here. Now. Don't be like that. <laughs> don't be like that. Okay, so there's the last one right there. I think we're gonna pull this off. I think we're gonna pull this off. Door is still open, that's good. Still good, still good. All right, we got our cross out and I can get to the last one. We can brute force this from here. Whew. Door is still open. Hopefully the, the uh, crucifix works 100% of the time. I would assume it does. Especially on easy. That laugh. It definitely does not like me being back here. It does not like when I'm back in that area. Door. All right, we're good. We're good. This is it. This is it. This is it. And now that should be it. The ghost should now be destroyed. Quick bonus, I got enough money in the demo here to upgrade from the poorhouse to the pub, which is pretty cool. And I got the pet cat. And he's pretty adorable. <laughs>